So if you've been watching my workout videos, you'll know I'm trying to get a full five bench this year, which I believe is completely realistic, provided that I don't get injured. That said, I've learned some things along the way that I'd love to share with you too. So I'm going to do that. And of course, I want to hear your feedback as well. What strategies have been helpful for your workouts? Let's see your feedback in the comment section and let's begin. First thing I'll say is that maxing out twice a week on bench press variations has been extremely stressful on my recovery. That I cannot deny. As effective as it is, I find myself being a lot more sore, more tired, sleeping at least nine hours a day, and eating a lot of food. My appetite has exploded, and I think it has everything to do with the fact that these workouts are just brutal. You see how drained I am when I film them. Sometimes I can't even talk during the workout. I just do what I gotta do, timer, train, that's it. And I usually do these workouts late at night while having coffee right before, and I can still fall asleep. That's how tired I am after doing them which isn't a bad thing. It means that I'm putting in the required effort to grow. But wow, it's not easy. I haven't pushed myself like this in a very long time. So hearing this from me, what can we learn? Well, maxing out once a week is probably all you need to begin with, which is what I've been promoting for most of these years. I ramped it up to twice because I want to accelerate my progress even further. And I have to say that it has been working in that regard. But the fact that you have to optimize your lifestyle that much more may not be worth it for most of you. And even with me, I'm having to change certain things about that too. For example, I can't do too much chain work if I'm maxing out back to back. If on Monday I did a bench press with 60 pounds of chains, the following workout on Thursday will not be bench press with 30 or 90 pounds of chains. Otherwise, my recovery goes to absolute garbage. I need to change the barbell or use straight weight back and forth like that. And the same thing goes for the accessories. More variation is absolutely required, not just the exercise, but the strength curve itself. So there's that. And also you need to do your deloads. I was like, okay, I'm going to try to milk this for as long as possible. Let's see if I can go on for months without having a deload. Not happening guys. After about three to four weeks, I found that if I don't get that deload in, I start feeling achy. So just one workout a week, every three weeks, I feel perfect. It's crazy because a lot of things that Matt Wenning has been discussing for years, I'm experiencing too. So if you plan on maxing out as frequently as me, then you best believe that deloads are immensely helpful. Like, trust me, you will feel stronger and better coming out of it. It's not supposed to make your strength regress. If you're on the bleeding edge of your recovery, they really do make a difference, okay? At the same time, I've been considering maybe not maxing out twice a week every week, but alternating depending how I feel. This way, the system is a little bit more auto-regulated. And the way that would work is by simply scrapping out the second max effort lift, and just doing my standard volume work. Or I would work up to a peak set of three to five reps. This way the intensity is slightly less. So that's something that I'm considering doing if I notice that I just can't handle this current routine. Because keep in mind, the absolute load is its own independent recovery variable. And the stronger you get, you will feel that. So that I can get more out of less weight, paying more attention to stimulus and fatigue, or just fatigue management in general, every edge I can get will be very valuable. So. If you've been training like me too, maybe consider a few things that I said. Secondly, I've been introducing the winning warm-up into my workouts. Every time I hit a bench press session, I come in, hit a horizontal press, a tricep exercise, and upper back. It's circuit training. Four is 25 for each, no rest whatsoever. I find that this primes me up, has my body feeling extremely pumped, and it lowers any aches and pains that I may have going into that session. So it's just an extra tool for recovery management, and to my surprise, it doesn't seem to affect my performance on the one or maxes. Or if it does, it's so minuscule that I haven't noticed anything significant. Maybe it does take out five, 10 pounds off my max, but does that really matter when they're training maxes to begin with? Probably not. You can argue this is actually better in terms of getting more or less weight. So it kind of forces you to deload a little bit if it actually does hurt your performance. But I don't know if that's true or not. All I can say is that I feel great when I do this. So I recommend you give it a shot as well if you use the conjugate system. Thirdly, I've noticed that for carryover, sticking to the six or 12 rep range makes more sense than 12, 15, or even doing 20s. Those I tend to reserve for burnouts at the end of my routine, but that I'm gonna continue doing three to five sets of 20 on an easy bar extension, I don't know about that. I love the fact that it feels better on the elbows, but I don't feel like it's giving me the same strength gains as I did when I was going slightly heavier. So I'm gonna go back to doing that and to compensate hit more tries to push downs in the form of overspeed eccentrics and do the push downs before the extensions. This way I come in a little bit fatigued, but I got so much of a pump that it's less stressful on the elbow. So you're getting that synovial fluid action. 
I recommend the same if you have sensitive elbows, hypermobility, or you want to build a raw bench in a slightly more specific way without compromising the recovery factors. So in this way, we get the best of all worlds. And the same thing goes for overhead press. I was doing a lot of three sets of 15, which is excellent. But again, I found the low reps gave me better carryover. So I'm probably just going to do more volume with that. And especially on the chain pressing. When I do chain overhead press in the six to eight rep range, wow, that gets your triceps really strong. So overall, I'm not knocking high reps. All the evidence suggests that they can build just as much muscle as the lower repetitions. But from a carryover perspective, I got better gains while sticking to the six to 12 zone than doing 12, 15s or even 20. So for that, I'm going to reserve it for really the small little movements, the major compounds, I'll try to shy away from that as much as possible. But if I have to do that once in blue moon, so be it. And usually that'll be for the third exercise and not the second, certainly not the first, especially for the bench press, by the way. I feel that when I do three sets of 20, my pecs get super pumped, but my triceps don't fatigue at the same rate. Finally, talking about recovery one last time, I noticed that doing a lot of heavyweighted pull-ups was in fact hurting my bench press recovery of all things. You wouldn't expect it, but I was going equally as hard as those compared to the pressing. If you actually watch the workout videos, I'd be like, okay, now it's time for back and buys. And the intensity was rather similar, putting up some extreme numbers, really pushing the limitations of what I was able to do. But that was taking the toll. And I noticed that I can't keep everything maximized at the same rate, at least not for now, given the fact that I'm maxing out twice a week on the bench. So as a result, I've toned it down significantly on the pull-ups, not going as heavy, and I'm mostly doing rows. I actually feel this is better for me right now because it is a little bit more back in there and it can address my rear delts slightly more, which is more important for the bench press. It's all about the upper back stabilization and pull-ups obviously do this to a tremendous extent. And there are variations that are more specific like the sternum pull-ups and the way you adjust your body angle. But right now I'm leaning more in the direction of doing penle rows, standard barbell rows, dumbbell rows, which really replicates the opposite position of a bench press. So I'm just doing a tremendous amount of rows. In addition to the off days, I do a lot of band rows, inverted rows, stuff like that. But I'm trying to get a lot stronger in a strict fashion. So progressive overload is being induced on that for now. Pull-ups are in the backseat. But once I get closer to my peak performance, then I probably will start doing those again. And I still have my goal of uh, four plates for this year. That has not changed. I do think I'm going to hit that too. But we got to do everything in one step at a time. And right now, the bench press takes... The highest priority of all. This is the, the one thing that I'm absolutely obsessed with. So I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I get my goal or at least super close to it. And if that means sacrificing something else temporarily, then I'm all for it. So right now, you can call me a bench press specialist. That's the only thing that I'm going really heavy on. For legs, I'm not even doing that either, by the way. Mostly three to five sets of ten. Hitting all the, the important exercises like belt squats, good mornings, etc. But I'm not training like a power lifter. I'm not trying to be the best at the squat and the deadlift. Whereas the bench, like this is full on bench specialization mode, competitive status. That's what I'm trying to do. Because 405 is no laughing matter. And it's taking everything I got. So that's the update guys. You'll see all this in my training videos as I continue to post some more. And of course, check out my Instagram because I upload a lot of one or maxes there. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this segment. Let me know if you agree or disagree with some of the philosophies I laid out today or what has your experience been with some of the things I spoke of. Let's see it and I'll talk to you all next time.